Hey, what's up YouTubers, it's Dansky, and in this video, we're gonna be learning how to take your 2D designs and turn them into a three-dimensional product shot. Now, this is something that's really, really cool, and I'm really excited to show you this. So, first of all, we're going to start by going to psdcovers.com. Now, the guys who have made this site have done an absolutely fantastic job, and they've put a lot of hard work into creating all of these actions that we're gonna be using. So feel free to share around and or send them some love as well. So on here, you've got lots of product shots and ways in which you can present your 2D designs in kind of a, a 3D format. So sometimes if you look on a portfolio site, you'll see that people have had their design work printed and they photographed it and that looks great. But sometimes it's not always easy to be able to photograph your design work unless you've got a studio and some lights and what have you. So this is a really good way of creating those kind of almost photorealistic examples of your design work, but presenting them in a, a real kind of like they've been photographed way rather than just a two dimensional flat design with no context as to what it relates to or what it's supposed to display on. So as you can see here, you can browse the site. They've got lots of different ones. They've got packaging, they've got flyer templates, business card templates, mug templates. There's pages and pages that you can scroll through. Or you can go up here and you can search. So if I wanted to display a brochure design I've done on a 3D brochure, I could type in brochure and just search for it. And you see you get all these different templates. And effectively what we're going to do is we're going to be adding our artwork to one of these templates so it will look like it's being printed and we photographed it ourselves. So what you do is you find one that you like, you go to download and read, and then you click here and download the action. And it should download the action as a .atn file. That's the file format for Photoshop actions. And then we can go into Photoshop, we can go to our actions palette on the right, or you can access that from this top window here on a Mac. Go down to actions, and then this little options button in the top right, you can click that and go to load actions. And then just navigate to your action file, your .atn file, and then click open, and it will load it into Photoshop. And you can see here that I've got plenty that I've used before. But the one I'm gonna be using today is called pamphlet 001. So without any documents open, you just go down here to step one, which is prepare template. So we're gonna click play and run that action. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna set up the template that we're gonna be using. So if I open that action up, you can see there are absolutely tons of different steps involved, and, but it's all automated. So it takes care of all of that for us. So now what we do is we've got a psdcovers.com template design. If you zoom in, it's got the instructions. Drag or paste your own artwork onto this document and carefully scale and position it within the provided boundaries. So that's these guides over here on the right. Each template is different, but for this one, this is the space we've got to play with. So what we do is we click on the top layer and we want to paste our artwork in. So I'm gonna find some artwork. Let's see if I can quickly find something that I've recently designed. Okay, so we've got a conceptual design here for a Glastonbury Festival poster cover kind of thing. So we'll use that, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna paste this in, paste it in as a smart object. And I want to resize it now so it fills all this black space. So let's just make that bigger like so. And one thing I will just say is that I do believe these actions were designed for Photoshop CS6. So as I'm using CC 2015, anything later than CS6, sometimes 
some of the actions don't work with later versions and they can be a little bit broken or they don't complete the actions in the exact way they're supposed to happen. That does only happen sometimes. Most of the actions I've used still work, but if you want, you can go up to Creative Cloud if you've got a subscription with Adobe. Let's just place this document here. If I load up Creative Cloud. So if you have a subscription with Adobe, you can go to Creative Cloud and you've got all the 2015 CC apps here, but you can go down to previous versions and you can install Photoshop CS6. So if for whatever reason the, act, reason the action that you're using isn't working in CC, then by all means install CS6 and it's gonna more than likely work because I think they were made with Photoshop CS6. Okay, so we've got our artwork in. So we've got this bit outside of the guide here, so we just wanna trim that. So if I just rasterize this smart object and then just make sure we've got that end selected. So this is our artwork now and it's within inside the boundaries. And it's the top layer and with the top layer selected, once we're ready to start processing, this is the really cool bit guys, it's gonna actually turn this into a 3D pamphlet. So we click the actions palette and then we go down to step two. Now this is what we do once we've prepped our artwork, and you click play. It does its crazy Photoshop magic. And it should give us a 3D pamphlet with this as the cover at the end of it. Perfect. There we go. How cool was that, right? So now we've got a 3D version of our cover graphic and it's just a much, much more effective and impactful way to present your 2D work and it gives it a bit of context, a bit of context now. Rather than just seeing the flat design that we had before, we can now see that it was actually a cover for something which is great for your clients and it looks a lot more impressive as well. So it's all layered up. You've got the shadow here that you can switch on and off. We've got a background, which is just got an overlay of white. And what we can do now is we're going to extend our canvas. Now let's extend that background. And I'm just going to create a new layer. Go over here, hold down on the paint bucket tool and just select the gradient tool. Make sure we pick a radial gradient up here. And then in the gradient, I'm gonna click on this one on the right and just select this color of the pamphlet. And then the one on the left that is currently purple, if we click that and then click on color, I'm gonna select the same color again, but just a bit lighter. Click OK. And then what we're gonna do is drag out from the center, so left click and drag to about here and let go. Let's try that again. I'm just gonna drag out just a little bit more. So extend this a bit more, just so we get a bit more of the lighter color. There we go. So now rather than just having a flat background color, we've got a little bit of a lighter color in here. In fact, we can actually do that again and emphasize that glow even more just by making this color even lighter so when we click and drag now, you should see a real big glow of light behind the pamphlet, just to lift it off the page. There we go, much better. Now that is a much more effective way for presenting any of your two dimensional work that you've designed. And it gives it a little bit more context for your clients when they're viewing your portfolio. Okay, so that was how you turn 2D designs into 3D product shots. I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.